What if I told you that the story of the Anglo-Saxons isn't just written in old manuscripts or carved into stone, it's encoded in our DNA? Yes, their genetic legacy is like a biological time capsule, offering a window into who they were, how they lived, and how they shaped history. But here's the catch, Anglo-Saxon DNA isn't just another chapter in the book of human ancestry. It's unique, so unique that scientists today still study it to uncover its secrets. So, who were the Anglo-Saxons? In the 5th century, as the Roman Empire crumbled, a wave of Germanic tribes, the Angles, Saxons, and Jutes, crossed the North Sea to settle in Britain. They came from northern Germany and southern Scandinavia, bringing with them not just their swords and shields, but also their genes, their language, and their traditions. What followed was a transformation of Britain's population, culture, and even its identity. But why is their DNA so fascinating? It's not just because it's old or rare. It's because it reveals an extraordinary story of migration, mixing, and survival. From their Germanic roots to their blending with native Britons, from regional genetic imprints to the advent of modern DNA technology, there's so much to uncover. By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly why Anglo-Saxon DNA stands out in the world of genetics, and what it tells us about the past, the present, and even the future. So, let's dive in. To understand why Anglo-Saxon DNA is so unique, we have to start at the beginning, with their origins. The Anglo-Saxons didn't just appear in Britain out of nowhere. They hailed from what we now call northern Germany and southern Scandinavia, regions inhabited by Germanic tribes. These were tough, resourceful people adapted to the rugged landscapes and harsh climates of northern Europe. The Angles, Saxons, and Jutes were three of the main groups that made up the Anglo-Saxons. Their homeland was a patchwork of dense forests, rivers, and fertile plains. Here, they developed a distinct genetic profile shaped by centuries of survival in challenging conditions. Their DNA carried markers linked to northern European populations, markers that set them apart from the Celtic Britons already living in Britain. In the 5th century, these tribes began their migration across the North Sea. Why did they leave? Historians suggest a combination of factors, rising sea levels that threatened their homes, internal conflicts, and the lure of fertile lands in Britain left vulnerable after the Roman withdrawal. When they arrived, they didn't just come as raiders. They came as settlers, bringing their families and their way of life. Their DNA brought something else, a genetic toolkit uniquely suited to their environment. Studies of ancient remains show connections between the Anglo-Saxons and other Germanic groups, such as the ancestors of modern Danes and Norwegians. This genetic link hints at a shared heritage of resilience and adaptability. But what makes this fascinating is how these new arrivals carried with them a distinct genetic identity that was about to meet and merge with the ancient DNA of Britain. And that's where the story gets even more interesting. When the Anglo-Saxons arrived in Britain, they encountered a population that had been living there for thousands of years, the Celtic Britons. These people were descendants of the island's earliest settlers, whose DNA carried traces of migrations from as far back as the Ice Age. But rather than completely displacing the Britons, the Anglo-Saxons did something remarkable, they mixed with them. Imagine two rivers flowing into the same basin. That's essentially what happened with the genetic legacy of these two groups. The Anglo-Saxons brought their Germanic DNA, while the Britons contributed their Celtic genes. This wasn't just a biological process, it was cultural, too. Over time, the two groups intermarried, shared traditions, and created something new, a blended genetic and cultural identity. Modern DNA studies have brought this process to life. In 2016, researchers analyzed ancient skeletons from Anglo-Saxon burial sites and compared their DNA to modern Britons. The results? A fascinating mix. In some regions, Anglo-Saxon DNA dominates, while in others, Celtic markers are more prominent. This blending wasn't uniform, it varied widely depending on where you were in Britain. Take Eastern England, for example. This region, where Anglo-Saxons first settled, shows a higher percentage of Germanic ancestry. But move west, toward Wales or Cornwall, and you'll find that Celtic DNA remains strong. 
These differences reflect the historical realities of settlement, conquest, and coexistence. But here's what's truly amazing. This genetic blending wasn't just about geography. It also tells us about the dynamics of power, trade, and community in early medieval Britain. The Anglo-Saxons didn't simply impose their DNA on the Britons. They absorbed and were absorbed in turn, creating a population that was neither purely Anglo-Saxon nor purely Britain, but something entirely unique. This genetic legacy isn't just a relic of the past, it lives on in modern Britons. If you've ever taken a DNA test and found yourself with a mix of Northern European and Celtic ancestry, you are likely seeing the echoes of this ancient blending. It's a reminder that history isn't just something we read about, it's something we carry with us in our very selves. One of the most fascinating aspects of Anglo-Saxon DNA is how it differs depending on where you look in Britain. When the Anglo-Saxons arrived, they didn't spread uniformly across the island. Instead, their settlements were concentrated in certain regions, particularly in the east and southeast. Over time, this led to stark differences in the genetic makeup of people living in different parts of Britain, a phenomenon that continues to this day. Let's start with Eastern England, which became the heartland of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. This area, including counties like Norfolk and Suffolk, saw a significant influx of Anglo-Saxon settlers. Archaeological digs in these regions reveal burial sites filled with artifacts typical of Germanic culture, and DNA analysis consistently shows a higher percentage of Anglo-Saxon ancestry here compared to other parts of Britain. People in eastern England today still carry more Germanic genetic markers, with some studies estimating that up to 40% of their DNA comes from Anglo-Saxon ancestors. Now, contrast that with Western Britain, particularly Wales and Cornwall. These regions were strongholds of Celtic culture and remained largely untouched by Anglo-Saxon settlement. The rugged terrain and strong local identities allowed the native Britons to preserve their way of life and their genetic heritage. As a result, modern populations in these areas show far less Anglo-Saxon DNA, with their genetic profiles closely resembling the ancient Britons who lived there thousands of years ago. But it's not just East versus West. Even within Anglo-Saxon-dominated areas, there were subtle variations. For example, the Kingdom of Wessex in the south has a slightly different genetic footprint compared to Northumbria in the north. These differences reflect the diverse tribal origins of the Anglo-Saxon settlers and the varying degrees of interaction with local populations. And here's the kicker, this genetic map of Britain doesn't just align with ancient history, it still correlates with modern identity. Studies have shown that people in different parts of Britain often feel a stronger connection to their regional heritage, whether it's the Anglo-Saxon legacy of the East or the Celtic roots of the West. This regional variation in DNA is a testament to how the movements of people thousands of years ago still shape who we are today. The unique distribution of Anglo-Saxon DNA across Britain is more than just a historical curiosity, it's a living record of migration, settlement, and cultural exchange. It reminds us that while we might see ourselves as united by nationality, our genetic stories often tell a tale of remarkable diversity and complexity. The study of Anglo-Saxon DNA wouldn't be possible without the groundbreaking field of archaeogenetics, the science of analyzing ancient DNA from skeletal remains. This technology has revolutionized our understanding of history, allowing us to uncover details about people who lived over a thousand years ago. And when it comes to the Anglo-Saxons, the results have been nothing short of extraordinary. Let's take a closer look at how archaeogenetics works. When researchers excavate ancient burial sites, they carefully extract DNA from the bones or teeth of skeletons. This DNA is then sequenced and compared to modern genetic databases. What makes this process so powerful is its ability to identify not just broad patterns, but specific details about ancestry, health, and even migration routes. For the Anglo-Saxons, this has revealed a wealth of information. For instance, in 2016, scientists conducted a large-scale study of skeletons from Anglo-Saxon burial sites across England. They found that these individuals had a genetic profile distinct from the earlier Celtic Britons, with clear links to northern Germany and southern Scandinavia. But what's even more fascinating is how this DNA blended with that of the native population. 
In some graves, researchers found skeletons with mixed ancestry, showing that intermarriage between Anglo-Saxons and Britons was more common than previously thought. One of the most famous sites associated with the Anglo-Saxons is Sutton Hoo, the burial place of an Anglo-Saxon king. While the DNA from Sutton Hoo itself hasn't been fully analyzed yet, nearby burial sites have provided invaluable insights. These graves reveal a mix of local and Anglo-Saxon ancestry, shedding light on how these populations interacted. Archaeogenetics has also debunked some old myths. For years, historians debated whether the Anglo-Saxons wiped out the native Britons or simply assimilated them. The genetic evidence is clear. While the Anglo-Saxons brought a significant influx of new DNA, they didn't completely replace the existing population. Instead, they became part of a complex tapestry of genetic and cultural exchange. But the story doesn't end there. Archaeogenetics continues to evolve, with new techniques allowing scientists to analyze even older and more degraded DNA. Every new discovery adds another piece to the puzzle, deepening our understanding of the Anglo-Saxons and their place in history. DNA doesn't just shape our biology, it's intertwined with our culture and identity. The Anglo-Saxons left a profound mark on Britain, not just through their genes, but through their language, traditions, and way of life. In many ways, their cultural legacy is just as unique as their genetic one. One of the most obvious contributions of the Anglo-Saxons is the English language. Old English, the language spoken by the Anglo-Saxons, is the foundation of modern English. Words like house, bread, and friend come directly from Old English, as do countless place names across England. Towns ending in ton, like Southampton, or Ham, like Birmingham, trace their roots back to Anglo-Saxon settlement. Even today, the linguistic footprint of the Anglo-Saxons is everywhere. But it wasn't just their language that shaped Britain. The Anglo-Saxons brought a distinct culture that blended with local traditions to create something new. Their art, for example, is a unique fusion of Germanic and Celtic styles, as seen in intricate metalwork like the Sutton Who Treasures. Their laws and governance also laid the groundwork for many aspects of modern British society, from local councils to the concept of common law. What's fascinating is how their cultural and genetic legacies overlap. Regions with stronger Anglo-Saxon DNA often show a deeper connection to Anglo-Saxon traditions, while areas with less Anglo-Saxon influence retain stronger Celtic elements. This interplay between genetics and culture helps explain the rich diversity of British identity today. While the cultural and historical impact of the Anglo-Saxons is well known, their DNA holds a wealth of biological insights. Specific genetic markers inherited from the Anglo-Saxons have shaped certain traits in modern populations, making their genetic legacy not just unique but also surprisingly relevant to us today. One of the most intriguing aspects of studying Anglo-Saxon DNA is identifying distinct markers tied to their Germanic origins. These markers are often found in genes associated with physical traits, such as skin pigmentation, hair color, and even immune responses. For example, studies show that the Anglo-Saxons, like other northern European populations, likely had a higher prevalence of genes for lighter skin and hair. These traits would have been advantageous in the northern climate, where sunlight is limited, aiding the production of vitamin D. But it's not just about appearance. Some genetic markers linked to the Anglo-Saxons have been associated with health and disease resistance. For example, certain immune system genes that help fight infections can be traced back to Germanic and Scandinavian populations, including the Anglo-Saxons. These genes might have given them an edge in surviving the harsh conditions of early medieval Europe. Perhaps even more fascinating are the genetic markers tied to diet and metabolism. The Anglo-Saxons were primarily an agrarian society, relying on crops like barley and wheat, as well as livestock. Over generations, their DNA adapted to this lifestyle. Modern Britons with Anglo-Saxon ancestry often carry genes that make them better able to digest certain grains or metabolize fats, a reflection of their ancestors' diet. Another area of interest is genetic diversity. Despite being a relatively small group initially, the Anglo-Saxons brought enough genetic variation to enrich the gene pool of Britain. 
This variation is still detectable today, particularly in regions where Anglo-Saxon settlement was strongest. In short, the genetic traits passed down from the Anglo-Saxons aren't just historical relics, they're part of the biological toolkit that shapes who we are today. From our appearance to our health, their DNA continues to influence modern populations in ways we're only beginning to understand. The Anglo-Saxon story doesn't exist in isolation. After their arrival, Britain became a hub for waves of migration and conquest, each leaving its own genetic imprint. Vikings, Normans, and later groups didn't erase the Anglo-Saxon legacy but instead added new layers to Britain's genetic tapestry. The Viking Age, which began in the late 8th century, brought Norse settlers from Scandinavia. These Viking invaders and traders settled alongside the Anglo-Saxons, particularly in northern and eastern England, and areas like Yorkshire and the Danelaw. Genetic studies show that modern populations in these regions often have a mix of Anglo-Saxon and Norse ancestry, reflecting centuries of coexistence. Then came the Norman Conquest in 1066. The Normans, originally Norse themselves but culturally French by the time of their invasion, introduced another wave of genetic and cultural influence. While their direct genetic contribution to the British population was smaller than the Anglo-Saxons or Vikings, their impact on culture and governance was profound. Later migrations, such as Flemish weavers, Huguenots, and Irish laborers, continued to shape Britain's population. However, what makes the Anglo-Saxon DNA so remarkable is its resilience. Even after centuries of mixing, the genetic markers brought by the Anglo-Saxons remain a significant part of the modern British genome, especially in regions where they initially settled. But here's the fascinating twist. Rather than diluting the Anglo-Saxon legacy, these later migrations often enhanced it. By mixing with new groups, the genetic diversity of Britain increased, creating a population that was stronger and more adaptable. This blending of genes is a powerful reminder that no population exists in a vacuum. History is a story of movement, exchange, and connection. Today, the genetic legacy of the Anglo-Saxons serves as a foundation for understanding how migration shapes societies over time. It's a testament to the enduring impact of a group that arrived in Britain over 1,500 years ago, forever changing the island's genetic and cultural identity. So, why is Anglo-Saxon DNA so unique? It's not just about where it came from, it's about the stories it tells. From their Germanic origins to their blending with native Britons, the Anglo-Saxons left a genetic fingerprint that continues to influence Britain today. Their DNA is a record of migration and adaptation, a testament to resilience in the face of change. But it's more than just a historical curiosity. The study of Anglo-Saxon DNA helps us understand who we are, how our ancestors lived, interacted, and adapted to their world. It shows us that identity isn't static. It's a dynamic, evolving story shaped by countless generations. And here's the most exciting part. This story is still unfolding. With advances in DNA technology, new discoveries are being made every year, revealing even more about the Anglo-Saxons and their place in history. Every skeleton unearthed, every genome sequenced, adds another piece to the puzzle, bringing us closer to understanding the full picture. So, as we wrap up this journey through Anglo-Saxon DNA, ask yourself, what does your DNA say about your own story? Whether you're in Britain or beyond, chances are you carry the echoes of ancient migrations, just like the Anglo-Saxons. Our genes are a bridge to the past, a reminder that history isn't just something we study, it's something we live every single day. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this exploration, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. What fascinates you most about the Anglo-Saxon legacy? Let's keep the conversation going.